What's up and thanks for joining me again this week. Today and for the next couple videos, I'm gonna be talking about the internals of physical join operators. And while it's fun to kind of geek out on the internals of how these things work in SQL Server, I'm also gonna talk about from a more practical standpoint of why this matters. See, a lot of people have different approaches to how they look at an execution plan when performance tuning a query. Personally, I like looking at these join operators first, at least very quickly, because they can tell you a lot about what the SQL Server Optimizer thinks about your data. So it's my hope that in this three-part series, we'll learn how these physical join operators work internally, and based on that knowledge, uh, we'll talk about what that tells us about the upstream operators uh, in an execution plan and you know what that means in terms of troubleshooting or performance tuning our queries. And so the first physical join operator I wanna talk about today is the nested loops join. And so the nested loops join works like this. We start with the first value in our outer table and then we iterate over every value in our inner table comparing the values each time to see if there's a match. If a match is found, SQL Server sends that to the output of our join operator. If no match is found, the inner loop iterator continues to the next row. Once it runs out of rows, it increments the outer loop iterator and the process repeats itself until all of the data has been looped over and compared. Since we're comparing every row in our first table to every row in our second table by default with our nested loops join, it's a very CPU intensive operation and we'll talk about it in a minute why that matters, but there are some optimizations that exist within the nested loops join operator that can make it worse, work faster, right? The example we just looked at is kind of a worst case scenario. One thing that could improve performance is when the inner table has its data pre-sorted for us. And this can be done either through an index that we create or through a spool or an index, right, that SQL Server creates at runtime. In that scenario, we're able to save quite a bit of time when iterating over every value in our inner table because SQL Server can seek to the rows that it needs to compare against the outer table instead of having to compare every single row. This reduces the total number of comparisons that need to be made improving performance. And there's even more optimizations that occur within these nested loop joins under certain scenarios. I'm not gonna cover them all in this video. Check out the links I've included below to two great websites, right, that cover that information in much more detail. Uh, check those out if you're interested, but let's talk about the practical aspects of, you know, now that we know how these nested loop joins work internally, what can that tell us about the upstream data in our execution plans? So at the start of this video, I mentioned I start looking at an execution plan, particularly large execution plans by seeing what physical join operators are being used because they tell me information about that section of the plan. So we already mentioned how the nested loops join is very CPU intensive. In order to do the join without any optimizations, SQL Server has to take all the rows in one table and compare them to all the rows in another table, right? Essentially doing a cross product takes a lot of time. So in general, that tells us that SQL Server isn't going to choose a nested loops join for really large data sets. If we see a nested loops join, it probably means that the data in that part of the plan that's getting joined together isn't necessarily big. Alternatively though, it could also be telling us that the estimates that SQL Server has about that data are super incorrect, um, and that the data that's going into that nested loops join is actually huge, but because our estimates are wrong, it chose a nested loops join instead of some other join that performs better for larger data sets. Seeing that, just looking, knowing our query a little bit, we'll be able to tell like, oh, is this nested loops join appropriate in this scenario or does it stick out like a sore thumb because we're dealing with billions of rows of data in our join and something must be up either with our stats or with a missing index because there's no reason why our plan should be getting a nested loops join. So another piece of information we can infer from a nested loops join uh, occurs when there is a RID lookup or a key lookup that's occurring as part of that nested loops join. So a RID lookup is, I, I love seeing them in execution plans because it means it's really, there's some really low hanging performance tuning fruit available for us. We could just add a clustered index to a table. Um, so at the very least we'll get a key lookup, but at least we won't be reading from a heap. So we should get some performance benefit there even if it's just a little bit. Now, key lookups uh, 
that are happening through that nested loop join uh, also give me a pretty good clue that maybe we have an index that isn't totally complete, right? It's not covering, um, or maybe our query is doing like a select star when we don't really need it to be doing that. So if we see that key lookup as part of our nested loops join, uh, you know, it's good to then check hey, is this truly a key lookup, right? We're not reading that many rows, so SQL Server decided that's a good way of obtaining the data. Or is this key look lookup happening when it shouldn't be there at all, right? We should be adding a column to an upstream index uh, so that this key lookup doesn't have to happen. So once again, seeing that nested loops join uh, followed with that key lookup right before it kind of gives me a hint that, hey, maybe there's some thing that we can do here to make our query perform better. Finally, the last thing that a nested loops join kind of tells me uh, sometimes is that because the data going into a nested loops join doesn't have to be sorted, uh, that may be one reason why SQL Server chose that physical join operator. So sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. Your data is coming in unsorted and it doesn't make sense uh, to go through extra effort or work to pre-sort it for the join operator. But it could also mean that you're missing a potential index, right, where that data could come in pre-sorted to that operator. Or maybe you can stage some of your data into a temp table first with some indexes on it, which can then go into a join operator that is maybe more efficient than a nested loops join. So while nested loops joins will always require a little bit more investigation with the operators around them, uh, seeing them in an execution plan can tell you a good amount of information about what SQL Server thinks about your data. And so, I hope now you have that kind of visualization of how a nested loop join works um, so that if you do see it in your execution plan, you can say, okay, does this make sense for this to be here? Or is something wrong with the statistics, right? Or a missing index or something like that to where SQL Server is picking this join operator when it could be picking a different physical join operator that would be more efficient instead. So thanks for joining me again this week. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like I said, it's just part one of a three-part series that I'm hoping to kind of finish out here through the end of the year. So next week's video, we'll be looking at merge joins as part two of this series. We'll look at both how they work internally and what they tell us about our execution plans. So be sure to come back next week and watch that. If you have not subscribed yet, please press that subscribe button below. That way you'll be notified of next week's video so you won't miss it. And I'll be able to see you again then. Thanks for watching.